Today we're going to make a simple wooden bench for kids. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, no, we're not having another kid. We volunteer a lot at our church and figured Children's Church could use a little bench. So let's do this. And the best part is we're going to make this entire bench seat out of simple dimensional lumber. Now a standard seat is about 17 inches tall, but of course a child's legs are much shorter than adults. So I'm thinking if I go down to about 14 inches, that should work well with their legs. And of course we don't need the full depth of a chair, which in this case is about 15 to 16 inches. So I'm going to aim for about 11 and a half to 12 inches. And I believe I can make this bench seat with one two by six and two two by fours. But first up, I need to square up the ends on these boards because they're usually pretty rough and not always 90 degrees. Now we're planning on this bench to be about 36 inches wide and that should accommodate two kids nicely. So I'm going to make two cuts on this 2x4 at 36 and one on the 2x6. Next up we need to cut out the legs and they'll be at 14 inches. I'm going to need four of those on the 2x4s and two on the 2x6s. At this point, I could just assemble these boards as is, but since this is going into a church, I want it to look a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna run each of these through a table saw and remove an eighth to a quarter of an inch off of each side, and that should allow each of the boards to kind of match together a little bit nicer. That's much nicer. With everything ready to assemble, I could use dovetails, I could use dowels, but I gotta remind myself, this right here is gonna be used and abused by kids. So I don't wanna make it overly fancy, but I do need to make it strong. So I think I'm gonna use a really basic finger joint. Let me show you. I'd love to assemble it like this with the two by six in the middle and the two by fours on the end, just as their own fingers. But that wouldn't give a whole lot of support to these sideboards and of course kids. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut out a little section here to create a finger on this board and a finger on this board, merge those together and do the same on the bottom as well. To get this as close as possible, I'm just gonna use a combination square that I've measured about halfway across the boards. And then I'm just gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna mark across both of these so we can make sure that everything lines up. And once we figure out exactly where we wanna cut it, it's a good idea to put a bunch of X's on the pieces that we're getting rid of so there's no mistakes. To cut out these pieces, I'm actually going to use a jig I built in a previous video that allowed me to have full control on the table saw and cut it out very accurately. If you're interested in this video, I'll put a link to that in the description. Otherwise, let me show you how it works. The jig just sits on top of your fence and allows you to go back and forth really easily with full control. To hold everything in place, I'm just using some dovetail clamps that already have some grooves cut into this jig, and that'll allow me to put the board in place, clamp it down, and then be able to move it back and forth over the blade, cutting it out real accurately. And once it's cut out, it should assemble nice and tight, just about like that. After doing the test fit, I realized that this center leg is way too long, but that's okay. I think I'm gonna go back and do a design here on the side so there's less of a footprint. But before I go any further, it's time to glue it up. I'm gonna glue these up in three separate segments using a carpenter square to try and make sure everything is as square as possible for each side. And then I'll go back and glue all three together. After giving a leg some time to dry, I drew a triangle right here, so that way it'll eliminate this excess piece and give it a nice little design. I'm gonna use a bandsaw to cut this out, but you can use a jigsaw or even a handsaw. Now it's time to glue it all together. And to make sure the glue bond is as strong as possible, I gave this several hours to dry. With the clamps finally off, this bench feels super sturdy, and I have a strong feeling that is primarily due to the finger joints we put in the end. These finger joints allow for a lot of contact area in between these boards, which allow for a lot of strength and limit any kind of twisting and movement. If you do build a bench like this and you feel that you need some additional support, you can always flip this over and add an additional piece in between the legs. You should have some leftover two by four and that should do great in between here. Since we're making this bench for children, we gotta watch out for some of these sharp edges. So I'm gonna take a palm router with a quarter inch roundover bit and go around all these top sharp pieces to smooth everything out. If you've done any woodworking in your past, then you know it's time to sand, sand, and sand some more. We gotta remove all these high spots and get as much of this glue squeezed out removed so we can put a finish. 
With the sanding all done, it is now time to either stain it or just put some kind of a top coat on this. Because I guarantee you, dealing with kids, even in a non-food environment, they're going to find a way to drop or spill something on here. So we got to protect it. I'm going to use a spa urethane that is water-based. That'll dry relatively quickly, and I can just put a bunch of coats onto that. And I'm just going to use a basic brush to apply it. After applying the urethane, the finger joints really stand out, making this bench look so much nicer. Here is a side view of the joints, and even though it was pretty simple to make, it looks super fancy. And there is a glimpse of the top, looking very pretty as well. Now if you enjoyed this project, make sure you check out this one over here.